Pad 39A at Cape Kennedy, Florida, Apollo 11 stands ready. Commander Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins, crew for man's boldest venture to explore the moon. Two of the crew, Neil and Buzz, take their last Earth-bound walk before breaking from Mother Earth's apron strings to walk on the lunar surface. The countdown proceeds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. The liftoff at 7.32 a.m. July 16, 1969, on schedule to the instant. The Cape control room relaxes. The launch is A-OK. -okay. More than a million, a bedazzled multitude headed by former President Lyndon Johnson are overcome by awe and pride. Radar-controlled cameras record the launch vehicle through the separations. Earth recedes. The moon looms. Eagle, the lunar lander, is separated from Columbia, the command ship. Mike Collins films the liberated module from Columbia as Armstrong and Aldrin guide their limb to the moon. Moments from touchdown, July 20, 1969, is about to become a date in history. The dialogue exchanged by Armstrong and Mission Control tells the story. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. The first live telecast from the moon includes an immortal declaration. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Buzz Aldrin becomes the second man on the moon to achieve President John F. Kennedy's goal set eight years ago. A heroic odyssey of bewildering complexity, it is symbolized by the stars and stripes. For the first time from a reliable source, we hear that the moon is not made of green cheese. The surface is fine and powdery. I can, I can kick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in the fine layers uh, like uh, powdered charcoal, but I can see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads and the fine sandy particles. They collect moon samples for scientists on Earth to analyze. If not green cheese, what then? A few pounds of rocks and sand more valuable than all the gems on Earth. They hold the secret history of the moon. For further study by Earth-bound scientists, a seismograph and a laser target were deployed. After a four-hour sleep period, they prepare to re-embark. On Earth, tension builds toward return liftoff. Then, Neil and Buzz streak free of the moon as Eagle rises to meet Mike Collins orbiting alone in Columbia. difficult maneuver must still be accomplished. Astronauts roll and pitch the Eagle to precise docking alignment. Close-up films reveal the perfection of the hookup operation. Homeward bound. 
demonstrating weightlessness. The crew relaxes after days of tense excitement. With all her woes, Mother Earth looks good to her furthermost wanderers. The recovery ship Hornet confirms re-entry with radar scanning the horizon for the splashdown. A helicopter is Johnny on the spot, finding the trio changed from spacesuits to special isolation garments. President Nixon has come to watch their homecoming. Recovery from the sea is performed by the Apollo team with the same flawless efficiency as everything in the eight days that went before. With nearly a half a million miles behind them, there is only this last mile for Neil and Buzz and Mike. At Mission Control, the men who guided and directed breathe a sigh of thanks and relief. We witness the end of an epic that many of us never thought we'd live to see. Yet the heroes must be quarantined, for no one knew if the strange moon dust is friend or foe. Weeks of isolation and debriefing lay ahead while they were watched and tested for any ill effects. President Nixon, before leaving on a world tour in the reflected glory of Apollo 11, visits. A presidential salute for those who told the world we came in peace for all mankind.